light years away. But our understanding of the universe only began to develop with the invention of the telescope in the 17th century. Early telescopes like this one used by Galileo used a lens to gather light. This is a larger version of the same idea. A rival design that uses a mirror soon became popular because they could be made much larger and hence collect more light. And it's mirror-based telescopes that are most widely used in astronomy today. The large main mirror collects incoming light and focuses it via a series of other mirrors onto sensitive instruments that record and analyze the light. Observatories are located on high mountains and contain an army of telescopes. A large telescope can be pointed precisely at any spot in the sky and track it as the Earth spins. New designs, such as the giant Keck telescope in Hawaii, use mirrors made of many separate segments. These are some of its first pictures of nebulae and galaxies, artificially colored by computer to bring out details. The Keck telescope has a mirror over 26 feet across. By the end of this century, an even more powerful instrument with four telescopes of that size working in unison will be in operation at the European Southern Observatory in Chile. Most famous of all the orbiting observatories is the Hubble Space Telescope, which has shown us the universe in more detail than ever before. Like a telescope on Earth, Hubble's large mirror collects faint light from distant objects and bounces it into a series of instruments behind the main mirror, including an electronic camera that takes remarkable pictures. Hubble photos show distant galaxies passing close to each other and perhaps even about to merge to form a super galaxy. This process could be the secret of galactic evolution. This spiral of bright young stars lies at the heart of a pair of galaxies that are uniting. The burst of star formation that created this spiral was probably triggered by the collision. Even the familiar Andromeda galaxy, the nearest spiral to our own, shows signs of having cannibalized another galaxy. Through telescopes on the ground, its core appears normal. But under Hubble's closer scrutiny, first one, then another center appears. One of them, the remnant of a smaller galaxy swept up a billion or so years ago and now absorbed almost without a trace. Our sun was born about five billion years ago. About 4,600 million years ago, a cloud of dust and gas in our galaxy collapsed to form a new star, our sun. Around the young sun, a disk of leftover gas and dust gradually collected into clumps. These became the nine planets, including Earth, that make up the solar system, all in orbit around the sun.
past three decades, space probes have explored all the planets in the solar system except distant Pluto. Among the most successful of these probes have been the two voyagers launched to study the outer planets. They were launched from Earth in 1977 on a journey that was to take many years, first flying past giant Jupiter and then Saturn, the planet with the bright rings. The second voyager then went on to look at the remote and mysterious planets Uranus and Neptune. Their jobs done, both voyagers are now heading out of the solar system forever and into the galaxy. Interstellar emissaries from the planet Earth. Who knows whether they may one day be intercepted by some alien civilization if any exists out there. In order of distance from the Sun, the nine planets are Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. The only one on which life is known to exist is the Earth. The four planets closest to the Sun are small and rocky. The Earth, seen here at lower right, is third in line and appears blue because of its oceans. Farther out are the four large planets of gas and liquid. Jupiter, top right, is the largest, and Saturn, with its rings, the most beautiful. Pluto, lower left, is a small icy oddity at the edge of the solar system, orbited by a moon half its own size. The hub of the solar system is the sun, an ordinary star 100 times the width of the Earth. Energy is released from the nuclear furnace at its center and flows out to the surface. Seen in X-rays, the sun is continually racked by storms and explosions. Each bright spot is like a cluster of hydrogen bombs going off. In close detail, the sun's surface seethes with tiny bubbles of hot gas rising to the surface like water boiling in a pan. Larger dark patches are sunspots, areas of cooler gas, each one large enough to swallow the Earth many times over. A total eclipse. The moon covers the face of the sun, blotting out its light. And around the sun's rim, a misty halo of faint gas comes into view, called the corona. With the sun's glare obscured, huge glowing clouds of gas called prominences can be seen arching into space around the sun's rim. They dwarf the Earth. Filmed in close-up, in the light from hot hydrogen, brilliant explosions called flares rip across the sun's surface, sending out streams of atomic particles that affect the weather on Earth. When the atomic particles from flares reach the Earth, they cascade down onto the atmosphere to cause a glowing ring around the magnetic poles. Seen from below, this colorful atmospheric glow is sometimes known as an aurora. Mercury, closest to the sun, is the smallest planet apart from Pluto. It's an airless and waterless ball of rock, only 50% bigger than our own moon, which it closely resembles in appearance.